Update 11 to Elite Dangerous Odyssey arrived yesterday bringing with it fleet carrier interiors and a new on foot surface mission option. In this video I'll give you my initial thoughts on the new features added. To make sure you don't miss any of our videos hit like and subscribe. Remember to click the little bell icon and select all notifications and to help directly support this channel you can also join our Patreon via the link in the video description. As is now the par for the course with all things Odyssey Update 11 also brought with it a long list of fixes and optimizations. Carrier interiors are obviously the big headline feature for the patch but Frontier also made some additions to the codex that refresh the lore contained therein and bring it in line mostly with recent changes that the last year or so of story in the game has added. The new protect missions are relatively simple but having tried one yesterday I can attest that they are fun and reasonably profitable. They task you with defending a thing at a settlement that is under attack by waves of NPCs. The MacGuffin that you're defending is, from what I've seen so far, generally something in the realms of an escape pod or, as was in the case of the mission I completed, a bunch of cargo canisters but in essence it is, to all intents and purposes, an object in the open that has to stay intact while NPCs attempt to wail on it. In the scenario that I tried the NPCs themselves were delivered via diamond back dropships, six at a time similar to how you see them arrive at surface POIs. They appeared to be on a timer with the ideal scenario clearly being that you clear each wave before the next one arrives lest you be utterly overwhelmed. The installation you're defending comes complete with a complement of its own NPC defenders but Frontier have said that the missions are best attempted in a team. With that said I soloed the one I did but I was wearing a G5 rated and fully engineered dominator suit with two G5 primary weapons. The incoming dropships do take some fire from the base's own defences but it's honestly of negligible effect. I would be fascinated to see what a few Scorpion SRVs could bring to the scenario, science clearly being required. It may have been the scenario that I attempted but I kind of expected the final wave to be tougher in some regard but it didn't feel any different, not in my G5 Dominator suit anyway. It's possible that such a feature might be too unpalatable of a gaming cliche for a game like Elite to present. I was a little disappointed that the objective wasn't mobile in some fashion. It was just sitting in the middle of the settlement waiting to be shot at and there didn't seem to be any reason it was just sitting there other than Frontier needed someone to shoot at it. I've not seen any other variety of mission type yet beyond defend the motionless defenseless thing that's waiting to be shot in the middle of the settlement but if they don't already exist I'd definitely be open to adding a bit more dynamism into them. Having the MacGuffin be a moving package or a VIP that has to get to the settlement storage area whilst under fire before you need to defend the storage area itself maybe. That may give the new Scorpion SRV more of a reason to have a gun on the roof as well as whilst it's a brilliant and stable vehicle for personal transport or exploration the armaments on it seem largely redundant currently. Your mileage may of course vary in that regard. Overall a good starting point for the new scenario and if Frontier expand on this as an initial implementation of the idea then I'm all in. Fleet carriers then, definitely the poster child for the update. Let's talk about that jump sequence. Since fleet carriers first launched and commanders started seeing the inside of the hangar bay while the fleet carrier jumped a good portion of the community has been asking to be shown the jump from the bridge. With update 11 we get that wish granted. For some there was a concern that the windows would be shuttered somehow and we'd not get to see the colossal personal movable cities in space traverse the dimensional barrier between destinations. As you probably know by now those fears were unfounded. The entire hyperspace traversal sequence is completely visible. Clouds, lightning, amazing sound effects and all. For the final countdown and duration of the jump your avatar is nailed to a chair on the ship having been escorted to a seat. The escorted to a seat text is a nice way of saying fade to black while you're teleported to a chair by the game so that you can't mess things up while Frontier do some smoke and mirrors and change the set dressing around you. As an in game set piece, a response to what the community asked for and a way to hide a loading screen however it absolutely works. 
I wasn't overly bothered by the in hangar experience for carriers but if I'm on a carrier now and it's jumping you can bet I'm going to be garfielding on the windows with everyone else. Aside from the bartender, more on that in a moment, the services on board the carrier work exactly as you'd expect them to. If you've used Vistagen or Guns R Us on a starport then you'll find nothing different on the carrier variant. The shipyard is an interior reflection of the exterior version of the shipyard facility quite literally and likewise offers no surprises currently. As we saw on the livestream presentation last year, proudly displayed in the interior shipyard space you'll find a Taipan fighter sitting in a landing bay ready to be deployed. As things stand any hope that the Taipan was going to be a usable asset that you could leap into and be catapulted into space Battlestar Galactica style in defence of the carrier you can flush that away right now. It's just a piece of set dressing, nothing more. That bartender then. In summary it's both great and it isn't great. The bartender facility on a fleet carrier allows the owner to trade in any on foot material in the game exactly the same way as fleet carriers can with commodities. You can set the prices that they're bought and sold at and, in theory at least, trade in them to your heart's content. The total amount of materials you can trade in at any one time is limited to 100. Any mix of whatever you want in there but it's 100 at the most. So dashed are any hopes that you had of finding or indeed being that go to carrier that is listed on Inara as having 500 metric tons of the super rare chicken lips that you need to polish off that rocket launcher all the way from G1 to G5 if you just hose it with enough money. There doesn't appear to be any way in game currently to interrogate a carrier either in the system or remotely to discover what it's selling. You literally need to park up, get out of your ship, run down the hall, talk to the barkeeper and find out if they have any chicken lips or not. I really hope Inara and EDDB etc are going to be able to step in and fill that blank again. If not, finding what you need will need to be crowdsourced in some other way to make it even remotely usable for both the buyer and the seller in the trade equation. Carrier owners tend to be quite wealthy so what I'm hoping we might find is that the trade of materials may become a way to distribute that wealth somewhat. Let's talk chairs. Chairs in starports, outposts and carriers are now usable by on foot commanders. That's a great addition and ticks off a much requested seemingly simple addition to the game that everyone was kind of surprised wasn't there right from the off. But don't celebrate yet people this is Elite Dangerous don't forget and things are never that simple. Once you're seated in a chair you cannot access any in game interface. Take a seat and you lose the power of speech and the ability to use your arms essentially meaning when you're seated that's all you're doing, sitting. You can't sit in a bar and talk to a friend for example as you can't pull up the interface and use text chat. You can't sit on the bridge of your carrier and pull up the navigation interface and set a jump despite the captain's chair presenting you with a really nice touch screen interface that adjusts to present itself to you upon detecting your posterior. In order to speak to that friend in chat or order your crew to jump to a new system you need to stand up, take said action and then sit down again which makes watching a conversation in a bar one of my new favourite spectator sports. In fact none of the myriad of computer terminals on board the carriers are usable in any fashion aside from the regular rather awkwardly installed regular surface settlement and starport terminals that we're used to seeing. In essence you can't sit in a command chair on your multi billion credit fleet carrier and actually issue commands. As you can imagine this has been raised on the forums and social media and FDEV are very aware of it. It would be very easy for me to say at this point that FDEV probably has plans to get to this stuff and improve on it, that this initial implementation of carrier interiors is just a framework and more is coming. If that's the case it would be good to see it expressed to the community from the outset. FDEV does have a history of adding features and then walking away never to return. Telepresence multi-crew and squadrons I'm looking at you with a tear in my eye. So for carrier interiors I do hope FDEV returns soon to cross the T's and dot the I's. There's currently 3 free colour schemes commanders can apply to their carrier interior and that's a nice freebie to start off with. 
It would be good to see FDev also launch some further arxable colour options as I can't believe that most carrier owners wouldn't like the option to decorate their ready room with bobbleheads, potted plants, trophies or even a Thargoid carapace rug or two. I love my fleet carrier, I love the utility it gives and I love the interior space and the opportunity afforded by player to player mat trading and I can't wait to go out in it this weekend with the community on an adventure but right now it could do with some more basic features and polish added that perhaps should have been there from the start. Have you been to a carrier yet and have you tried all the chairs yet? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video consider subscribing to the channel and maybe take a look at one of our other videos linked on screen right now.